Hey, welcome back to our 10th and final official Demand for Discipleship video. This is the last part of the uh, the official curriculum, but I hope it's only the beginning of, of a new season, a new time in your life. I hope you're taking this as seriously, and the fact that you've pressed through gives gives me great uh, joy. I'm, I'm really thankful that you've uh, pushed through in this curriculum, in this program, and I do hope that it turns into more than a program in terms of how you utilize this uh, this information and these ideas, that it encourages you to do the actual work of ministry, the actual work of, of investing in others and spurring one others uh, on others towards Christ. I could not overstate how wonderful and how big of a deal this is. So uh, as we get into our study today, our final study, we'll just summarize all the steps that we looked at. We looked at selection. We looked at the idea that you are a human being with a limited amount of space and time, and the Lord designed us to have those limitations and to use those limitations by putting our attention, our time, in one or fewer fixed and focused places. We could spend all of our time trying to en entertain the broad masses or trying to reach the broad masses, and there's a place for that as we've seen but you're going to have your maximum impact when you uh, invest in a simple few, in a smaller number. And we saw how association was so vitally important that we are, need to make that association, make the time to be with these people and be to, available to others in order to impact their lives. We saw consecration. Again, the idea that you're going to become or you're going to choose people and choose to invest in people who understand that they are set apart by Christ and how important this task is. If someone's not ready to be consecrated or someone's not ready to be committed to the task that the Lord has for them, it doesn't mean they're bad. It might just be they're not ready yet. They're not there yet. And you need to spend your time investing in those who are ready to move on, who are ready to take that step and go forward, whether that's um, forward towards knowing the gospel and being attentive to or willing to listen to and have those spiritual conversations in the case of a non-believer, in the case of a believer, um, being willing to take their faith seriously and invest in, in their uh, walk with Christ. Then we moved on to impartation, the idea that you're not just spending time with them and you're not just looking for commitment out of them, but you're actually giving them something. And that means you have to have something to give. And what you have to give is the is the Spirit of Christ. What you have to offer them is what Christ has put within you by His Holy Spirit, by your gifting through His Holy Spirit. That's what you have to offer, and that's how you have to serve them. That's what you have to point them to if they're a believer within themselves, as they know Christ and as they walk with Christ. To impart that spiritual truth on them means to take seriously those moments. Uh, that you might share with them, that you're not just hanging out and taking the path of least resistance and talking about s local sports or the, the weather, but you're actually investing the time to have those, those uh, challenging, deep conversations and ever-deepening conversations. Look at demonstration. You're letting them into your life enough that you're able to demonstrate with your life, your life being a sermon, just as Christ's life was the perfect sermon. And yes, your life will be flawed, but the flaws are actually your advantage in this case, because as you fail and as you f fall and as you make mistakes, you have the opportunity to be open and vulnerable with the people whom you're investing in or in whom you're investing. And as you invest in them, they're able to see that you are able to accept Christ's grace and don't expect that perfection out of yourself, but in fact, only continually humble yourself all the more and look to Christ for his uh, power and life to come forth as you rest and abide in him. Amazing stuff. Then we saw delegation becoming an important part of the process. In other words, you don't just expect them to listen and listen and listen and learn and learn and learn, but you help, you let them be a part of your ministry, let them be a part of what you're doing, delegate tasks, whether that's helping with menial things or very uh, central and important things, giving them the opportunity to use their gifts and exercise their gifts of teaching, of evangelism, of hospitality, of care and the like, so mercy and the like. Um, and then that naturally leads to supervision. They need to look back on those tasks that were delegated and ask, how did that go? What did we learn from that? What did we see from that? And most importantly, as we saw in the section on supervision, returning their focus, returning their focus to the picture and to returning their eyes to Christ and the ultimate centrality of their relationship with Christ so that ministry never becomes the hurdle between them and their, tr their relationship with the Lord. Finally, we saw reproduction, trying to not trying to in, demanding, insisting upon an attitude that understands that every disciple needs to be a disciple maker. 
and that you're preparing them to ultimately go and, and invest in other lives. That's essentially the, the whole big picture. And we would remind you again that this is not a chronological affair. This isn't necessarily step one, step two, step three, step four. These are all ideas that should kind of be kept uh, in mind as you meet people along the way. You'll meet people in various levels of, of understanding of the Lord and various levels of maturity. And your, your part in encouraging them could vary deeply. They might need a great deal in the impartation or the... Um, uh, association space. They just might need a lot of time for you to be with them and if you uh, are able to commit that to them. They might need help in understanding their consecration. They might need extra help um, with more information, more truth, more uh, knowledge of Christ being imparted upon them. So there's just no, you know, this isn't some sort of boxed, boxed canned uh, program that you just uh, open up and, and, and let fly. That being said, these principles are of the utmost importance and they are how Christ chose to change the world and they're still how he chooses to change the world as much as we have all sorts of uh, different machinations that we've made for ourselves uh, to try to beat that and best that. Nothing has ever improved upon Christ's plan of of, of uh, evangelism and disciple and growth by discipleship by process of people in relationship and uh, discussion and growth over time together. So at this point, we want to let you know some important facts. One, plans will vary. This is uh, again a, a wonderful study to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's very easy to get caught up in the personality uh, effects or defects of the person who might have invested in you or someone who you've. Uh, pinpointed as being a good leader. And the reality is there will be as many different ministries as there are different people and different personality types. You might be that loud mouth, tell it like it is, proclaim the truth, you know, at all costs and get in a fight, high conflict person. In that case, the Lord will be softening you and will uh, ask you and, and move you towards growth. But nevertheless, if that's you, that's going to be a part of your ministry. However, if you might also be the more soft-spoken type who's more likely to give suggestions, less likely to head go head on into a conflict. You might be of the type to be very high social demand and be able to uh, be able to maintain multiple uh, multiple or many, many, many relationships. Um, and you might be rather introverted and, and only have interest in a couple really deep relationships. The plan will vary. And it has to do with you. It has to do with how the Lord especially made you and appointed you to the circumstance in which you have been placed. So please do not fall into the trap or the error of thinking that because this looks a certain way or because you uh, understood this a certain way or because you've uh, perhaps put expectations upon a certain personality type that you anticipate to be the true leadership type or, or attitudes. And don't try to fake those. Don't try to... Um, don't try to imitate those personality quirks as if somehow by being brusque or straightforward or being overly uh, overly sugary sweet or saccharine sweet that you're going to somehow, by being false, you're going to somehow have a more effective ministry. We will all grow and we need to learn to temper, us, temper ourselves in the edges by the power of the Holy Spirit. But there is no pat set way that this is going to be done. Additionally, it's going to, your ministry is going to be very much impacted by who and how much uh, time you have, who you're involved with. For you, it could be starting a Bible study at work or starting family devotions amongst your family once a week or each night or however it is that you do that. Your plan going forward could involve starting a simple prayer group with uh, people in your life or in your neighborhood or, or even just committing to joining some sort of uh, club, walking club, exercise club with the goal of have, finding new people to pray for and new people to start spiritual discussions with. There are as many options and as many possibilities as uh, there are choices in your life. And so I want to encourage you not to expect this to fit some sort of or come to you in some sort of set plan, do this, step one, step two, step three manner. This is your life and this is the ministry that comes out of your life. And the Lord will bring these principles to bear and to fruition as you walk uh, through the paths that he has set for you. However, we do want to make a couple of important uh, statements here, not again, not to turn this into a uh, step one, step two thing, but we want to re remind you and encourage you, choose a few. Choose a few. 
If you think about all the people who have impacted you, all the public figures, all the most uh, famous maybe pastors, preachers, philosophers, authors, and the like, undoubtedly none of them has impacted you even a quarter as much as has your own parents, your mother, your father, or your uh, foster parents, adoptive parents, the people who invested you in you and raised you, obviously had a far greater impact on your character, on your life choices, than any public figure. What do we draw from this? Being a public figure, having a range of influence that, uh, that might grab the ears of many is fine. It's wonderful if that's what the Lord's appointed you to, but that's not the highest impact you'll have. You want to make a difference, you want to make an impact in this world, then it will happen because you have dedicated personal time, one-on-one, one-on-three, -on -one, one -on in a small group with people. Those are, the, those are the relationships that shape our lives, that shape our viewpoint, that shape someone's ability to look to Christ. The Lord might use those big picture ministries, and, and maybe you can take part in one or be at the head of one at some point, but the most powerful thing you'll ever do is invest time. In prayer, in your children, in your husband or wife, in your neighbors, in the people that you work with that you see every day. That's where you have a real impact. It might not feel as attractive as, uh, you know, putting something out on television or over the internet and, and hoping to receive positive feedback, but I can guarantee you no internet uh, video, no public radio ministry, no television ministry will ever have the impact upon the people around you as the few that you choose to invest time in, particularly when they know they, that you love them and you care for them and you want to see them grow in Christ. You will have the maximum impact if you are willing to choose a few and not get trapped into the numbers game. We oftentimes are tempted to measure the success of our ministry by nickels and noses, as if something is more successful, as if, if it you know gets blown totally out of proportion and you know explodes into hundreds or thousands or thousands of thousands of people, and we assume that must have been good. That must have been a successful ministry. And I would suggest to you, not necessarily. And if it is a successful ministry, it is not because of the nickels or noses. It's because of the impact that's happening within that ministry or organization that happens between a life and a life, between two people as we walk towards Christ, as we make him known to others. So please do not for one moment, get suckered into thinking or measuring the power, the impact, or the viability of your life ministry, of your life's ministry, by simple and ridiculous numbers. Stay faithful. Stay the course. Choose a few. The impact that you will have upon lives through investing in, in a loving and caring way, in a Christ-like manner, in just a simple few, just as Jesus did, is the maximum opportunity you have to impact the future of this world and be the best uh, part and the most uh, viable part of God's plan as possible. Our final encouragement to you, exhortation to you, is this. Stick with them. Pick those few. Maybe you get them around for Bible study. Maybe you get them around for... Uh, the prayer group, maybe you just go walking together, but pick those few and put in the long yards. Stick with them. It happens over time. And you don't know whether it's someone you're going to invest in and have spiritual conversations for 30 years before they place their faith in Christ. Or for 40 years before they start and get to the point where they're ready to reproduce themselves in the lives of others. But stick with it. Do those long yards. Nothing could be more important. Spend that time. Invest those moments with those people. And don't back down. And don't run away. For there'll be times when it's boring. There'll be times when it's irritating. There'll be times when it's challenging. There'll be times when you're pushed away. And there'll be times when you invest for long times in a relationship. And for whatever reason, whether you know people moving jobs or moving cities or just breakups in the relationship, like with Paul and Barnabas there'll be um, parting, and that'll be painful. But stay the course. Stick with those in whom you can invest and bring them, encourage them on to maturity in Christ as disciples of Christ. Well, I'm so thankful that you've gone through these 10 simple lessons, and I would remind you again, they're only empty lessons until you apply them. 
They're only empty lessons until you put them into practice, until you start writing down the names of those three, those 12, those 70 people in your life, those spheres of influence, and committing them daily and regularly to prayer, until you are willing to put yourself out there and take the risk, select those faithful, available, and teachable people, and invest in them, then these are just nice words, if they're even nice words. I want to encourage you to continue with prayer. If you uh, have continued access to the person who's been coaching you in this process, then don't let them go. Ask them to uh, continue to meet and continue to challenge you and continue to think through your ministry as you as you uh, live this life, as you walk with Christ. Because those relationships, someone who's willing to invest in you and listen to you as you uh, think about and you dream about your ministry, the, of the ministry of your life, are invaluable. Well, again, may the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord richly bless your ministry. Whatever church you might be a part of, whatever organization the Lord might have you to serve in, wherever you're at, may his name be glorified in all ways, in all times, through you and through your life, all by the power and grace of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Righteous One.